to today. All right. All right. What are we up to today? Well, today we've got uh, kind of our preparations for the nitrous kit. Obviously, Deuce is going to help us today. Uh, but uh, what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we are carbon free um, on the intake valves because we don't want to be spraying nitrous, having a bunch of carbon stuff blow in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to take off the, the engine cover, the front uh, intake thing here, and then also the intake manifold. And then what we're going to do is uh, we're going to use sea foam and we're going to clean it up. But we're not going to do it the traditional way. So what we're going to do is first things what we're going to do is we're going to take that intake manifold off and look down in there and see how much carbon deposits are deposited on this engine. Now I have catch cans, so hopefully the catch cans have been doing their job. If they're doing their job, then they're not that dirty. So last time I did this was about three years ago. Um, I think I posted my results on Nico Club. Uh, maybe I'll pull up some pictures and post them in right here. And, uh, and we can see how bad they were. I cleaned them up pretty good. <clears throat> and we'll see how that is. If they're bad, then we're gonna put the intake manifold back on and we're gonna run that sea foam back through there. And and we're going to do it a, a, a different way than how I did it last time. Um, so I want to see how this sea foam reacts. So when I pull the intake manifold off, I'll show you what I mean by that. So let's get after it. Alright, so looks like we got most everything off. We got the intake tubes off. We got the throttle bodies off. Notice I didn't disconnect them at all because when you disconnect um, the throttle bodies or the, the electrical connector from the throttle bodies, um, the computer gets all mad. So to avoid any um, upsetness from the computer, I'm just going to leave those connected same thing with the map sensor so not messing with those leaving everything connected um, and as you can see here that is inside the intake there and all we have are let's see we got uh, one two three four i believe we have five 10 mil bolts per side and this intake manifold comes right out i want to say if you're good at this this is probably a 30 minute job at most, maybe 20 minutes. So anyway, let's get after it. ready to take the intake manifold off it should just lift up and out so I'm gonna tilt it forward and pull it towards me
All right, now I'm gonna pull this thing out. There is one little hose that goes to the back of the intake here, and that goes in to the, uh, the cab of the, uh, the car. I think that's probably for um, HVAC, but I'm not entirely sure. Maybe I'll look at the FSM and, and see what it is. All right, now let's take a look down into the engine and see how crudded up we are. Let's see, get the uh, whole flashlight here. And, uh, holy smokes. We're looking pretty good, to be honest with you. I mean, yeah, there is some carbon buildup here, but it does not look to be that bad. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that, uh, yes, the catch cans are doing their job, amazingly. Um, yeah, everything looks really good in there. So I am, uh, I'm very happy with that. So um, I'm going to, um, I'm gonna put the intake back on, put everything back on just as I had before. And I'm going to run the sea foam through the, through the intake. Now, I'm not going to run it like everybody else runs it. So, let's come over here to the intake manifold. So, what you want to look for in here is, if you look down in there, see if we can get a good shot of it. There's a little shiny piece right there and what that is see if we can look get a better shot in here what that is is a hole and for each port each intake runner you see the intake runners here each intake runner comes up and they all have this Kind of bulkhead fitting or manifold fitting and you can see one here one here one here and one here and there's this big long track that connects them all and they all go to this pcv line so what i'm going to do is i'm going to run a line directly off of this and it's going to be a hose and it's going to be dipped into the top of the sea foam and I'm gonna suck it in directly. And what that's gonna do is what, what, uh, what I'm hoping is that's gonna be like sea foam direct injection right onto the valves right there. What a lot of people do is they will spray the sea foam into the throttle body. And what happens is you can see in here, see if I can get a good view. So there's the port right there and that's pointing down can't really get a good shot of it but when you follow this port from this engine or from this cylinder it goes down and around over to here and that's the bell mouth of that intake tube right there so when you're spraying seafoam into the engine you're not really getting seafoam into the valves i mean you might be getting mist in there you might be getting something in there but it is not like um, hitting the valves like we would if we had a traditional intake. So what you're gonna have is a lot of that sea foam is gonna puddle up in the bottom of the intake and it's not really gonna do much. So what I'm hoping, and if we look at this while like it's on the engine, what I'm hoping is that we spray sea foam in here, comes up in here to this manifold and it goes off to each one of these intake runners, boom, 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 and boom. And it sprays directly into the cylinders. And the same thing over here. Same manifold, same plug right, or uh, uh, fitting right there, goes directly into each cylinder. And with any luck, um, we get it clean. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this intake back on, throttle body's back on, intake back on, 
not going to really tighten everything down 100 percent you know obviously the throttle bodies i will and everything else but uh for the most part i'm just going to get it on there just enough to where i can run the seafoam in the engine through these two ports and see if we can't get some cleaning action on those valves if we get some cleaning action on those valves that'll be awesome um, that might save everybody a lot of time money and resources from doing the walnut blasting because they can get that direct injection of the seafoam or of the bg44 or of whatever chemical that you decide chevron um i know they have that uh additive with the pea additive is supposed to break down the carbon you could even use that for this um so um without further ado i'm gonna go ahead and get after it all right so as you can see i've got a hose hooked up to that crankcase vent line and it is routed to inside the uh the car here and that tube is going to go in here i routed it inside the car because i have to modulate the throttle so that uh the engine doesn't die when we start sucking up the seafoam so without further ado we're gonna get after it all right here we go so i got the lid off the, the seafoam and start the car Got a pretty good vacuum leak here. Engine doesn't seem to be too mad about it. Let's see, let me turn off the AC. And let's see what happens here. All right, so I'm gonna slowly dip this in and just see what happens here. Okay, it is idling up a little bit. stumble keeping it right around 2,000 rpm so it's a little shaky Getting a check engine light, that's for sure. Shut that off and do the other side of the engine. Same thing. <clears throat> Woo! It is smoky in here. All right, now I'm just gonna do a rinse and repeat. Now I got the line hooked up on this side of the engine. Put the fans on it for about 15 20 minutes get everything cooled down so i don't burn my hands on stuff and uh, other than that i'm going to take it off and we're going to see what the results are all right now that it's all cooled down i'm going to uh take it off take the intake manifold off again 
and we're gonna take a peek down into the uh, to the intake. All right, let's see what the results are, and we'll have to compare. But with my eyeball, I don't really see that much of a change. Now, the actual the walls look cleaner. It looks like it got some schmutz in there, but when it look, comes to the valves, I really don't see a big change. Um, so, see foam. Maybe if you do it a lot, I don't know. Maybe if you try the BG44 additive. There it is, proof. I just did it before and after and not much of a change. So would I be wasting my money on Seafoam? Well, I just did, but will I do it again? Probably not. So uh, after looking again, I do see some uh, little carbon stuff that I'm gonna kinda chunk off I have some I have some tools that I can reach down in there and try and get some of the big stuff off but for the most part there's really not much going on there the only thing that I can see is that the walls and the cylinder heads look like they're cleaner but when it comes to the actual valves I don't know maybe slightly cleaner but $26 Take a vacuum line off, suck it in there, blow smoke out your exhaust for 25 minutes. Maybe I didn't do it right. Somebody wants to comment, make a comment down below. Let me know if I did it right or if I did it wrong, how you're supposed to do it. Let me know. All right, thanks. All right, <clears throat> it is all buttoned up. Um, the only thing I have left to do is to clear the codes that got set. It's probably just a misfire code. Uh, I'm probably just ticked off that uh, I'm sucking all that stuff through. But uh, overall, I would say don't waste your money on seafoam. Pay somebody good money to do the walnut blasting or clean it out with the uh, the cleaner, with uh, like pipe cleaners and stuff. I know there's a good video on the car wizard. I'll link that into my description, but there's a good video that the car wizard does to show about how to do decarboning your valves on the direct injection engines. But <clears throat> Long story short, I would do the walnut blasting over the seafoam treatment or the fuel treatments because they don't seem to work uh, as obvious. If I didn't do the test right, tell me because uh, I feel like I did it just as I should, but the only thing maybe I didn't do is maybe start with a completely hot engine on a hot summer day. I feel like the seafoam didn't do much, so I couldn't see that changing much, but I could be wrong. Now we know that the catch cans are empty. I emptied those out, had about this much fluid in them. So it's definitely doing its job. I haven't checked those in probably three oil changes, three or four oil changes. So they're doing a great job. Let's see, I can tell you that the nitrous kit is ordered. The Innovate gauge uh, window switch is ordered. The O2 bung for the exhaust has been ordered. Let's see, what else did I order? I feel like I got something else. Oh, the uh, separate fuel system. So that's gonna go in the trunk. That has been ordered. Um, waiting on delivery status on that stuff. Hopefully by March 20th, I should have it and I can start installing it. Um, in the meantime, I'm gonna be working on the red 300ZX. Well, again, uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, I get a lot of great feedback from you guys. If you guys want to um, throw some stuff in the comments, let me know how I'm doing. Throw your ideas down in the comments as far as maybe what you'd like to see in the future. I think that's about it. But yeah, again, thanks for watching. Uh, please like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. It is very much appreciated. So hope you all have a uh, good one, and we'll see you in the next one. All right. Thanks, guys.